baby rhyme. Bam, 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 bam. I do believe. <laughs> I'm saying it's early in the morning. It is 9.02. We are live. How's everybody doing? Today, we're going to talk about... What do I got going on? Something on my head here. <laughs> Piece of string. Today, we're going to talk about uh, something very cool I've been thinking about, and that's um, pump gas and detonation and relative to how much power you make. So the question is, uh, and here's the, here are the two scenarios, and we can, we can talk about whether or not you think one is more likely to detonate than the other. It's an interesting question. I don't have the data, unfortunately, so I'm going to ask you guys. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. So if you're watching the video, even after the live feed, please make a comment and let me know kind of what you think. But here's the deal. If we're right, we know that if we run boost on something that it is more likely to detonate. That's why we can't run lots of boost on pump gas. And, you know, we, we know that that's, that's a real thing. So the question is, if you have a stock, it could be any kind of motor, but we'll use an LS as an example. So we have a stock 5.3 liter from the wrecking yard, like an LM7, an iron block deal with a very, very mild camshaft. And we've already shown that if you run that LM7 with a stock cam, all stock, stock intake, heads, all that stuff, and you run it with a turbo, you just add boost to what's there. You can make really good power. So we add seven and a half pounds to that. It makes, you know, it makes 350 or something like that. And it'll increase that by 50% and, and away you go. And so it makes good power. The thing is, what happens when you run, um, you know, the same amount of boost, but run it with a camshaft? So I'll, I'll give you an example of what we're talking about here. So Let's see if I ran this with a stock cam. No, I did not. So we know, let's see, we can do the, we can do the math on this really quick. Okay, so let's say that we run our, we take a stock motor, stock camshaft on an LM7, run, you know, seven and a half pounds on it because that's half an atmosphere makes for an easy math. And 1.5, we can multiply the NA power output by. And we make somewhere near 500 to 525 horsepower. Then we take and put a camshaft in the, the motor. Like, let's say we put something even mild in there, like, let's say a truck Norris cam. We run the same boost level, seven and a half pounds, and but we run it with the new camshaft. Well, we know with the new camshaft, you're going to make about 100 more horsepower under boost at that boost level compared to the stock cam. You're running the same boost, so the air temperature is going to be the same because the, the air temperature, I mean, you, you guys can <laughs> nitpick this and go, well, yeah, but it's at a different part of the map because it has different power. And, and different flow rates. And so the different part of the map might change the temperature. Yeah, but if you're talking about one or two degrees, the variation between what we get at the, at the change in efficiency level in that range is going to be so minor that the difference between one run and another run, the temperature starting temp and the ending temp would probably be different enough more so than the change in compressor map position. Let's just say that it's the same. So the same boost, same temperature, one of them is making 100 or 100 plus horsepower, more power. So my question is, which one of those is more likely to experience detonation? Let's say we're running 91. Let's say we're running pump gas. And we have to tune them accordingly. You know, we have to put the, the, basically tuning them accordingly means, and a lot of people don't really understand this, it just means running the right amount of timing. You're going to run the same air fuel mixture. You might richen it up a little bit with pump gas, but that's not usually the adjustment that people make. Usually the, the adjustment that people make is less timing compared to E85 or compared to race gas. That's what it allows you to do. It allows you to make the motor more efficient because that's what timing does. If we, if you have to run 10 degrees of timing under boost instead of 20 degrees of timing where it should be, you're going to make a lot less power. It's going to be safer because it's not going to make that power. But my question is, is, is the detonation threshold of the motor solely because of what we're seeing as a temperature change or is it a change from 
cylinder pressure? You know, what what is are all of these factors coming into play? We kind of think that they do. But what do you guys think? Do you think that you would be able to run the same timing, for instance, under boost, under that low of boost? With an, and we're talking about having an intercooler, too, because naturally we would want to have that. So do you think we would be able to run the same amount of timing uh, with both of those combinations? One of them obviously making 100 horsepower more and probably a good bit more torque as well. Because if we're making more power, we're going to be making more torque too. Um, we, we would see a small crossover between that particular truck Norris cam and a stock one way down low. But I think that's probably going to come more into the response rate of the turbo. It's not going to affect the torque peak. The, the torque peak is going to be higher with a truck Norris cam than it is with a stock cam anyways. Because we've seen that. Um, in fact, I think I can, I can look that up. Here's our stock cam. Here's our truck Norris cam. Yeah, the truck Norris cam basically makes a lot more torque. It makes a lot more torque everywhere from from be just below 3,000, which is kind of where we started this. Below 2,900, it looked like the stock cam made a little bit more, but that's not anywhere near the torque peak. The torque peak is way out at you know 4,500 or 5,000. And the truck Norris cam, yeah, made like 25 more foot pounds co compared to the stock cam. So you're not getting, you know, you're not getting more torque with the stock cam. You're getting more torque with the truck Norris cam. So because we're getting that, is that going to be more prone to detonation? So I, we'll we'll have a poll here for this. Okay, so would a stock cam turbo motor run at seven and a half psi be more likely to detonate than a cammed motor? And will and I can't fit it in there. Maybe I can. At okay, I can. So would a stock cam turbo motor run at seven and a half psi be more more likely to detonate? than a cammed motor at seven and a half. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that the added power is going to determine the detonation? Do you think that just the boost does and, and the, and the attending like temperature? Do you, what, what do you guys think? Do you think that, um, what, what do you, <laughs> let me know what you think. I'd be interested to see, I'd be really interested to see the um, obviously cylinder pressure traces would be awesome, but even even knock counts would be kind of cool. <sighs> Frosty cold beverage, breakfast breakfast of champions. Let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, I tend to lean toward looking at the torque curve kind of as an indication toward detonation, and and that might be a good source. You know, temperature is one thing if, as, as we run high boost. You would know if we run high boost and, and we don't have an inner core that the thing is more likely to detonate. That's certainly a possibility. If the boost and the temperature are the same, that's a good starting point. The octane of the fuel is the same. That's another area that we would look as the fuel octane. But then you would look at, you know, you look at cylinder pressure, I think. But, <laughs> but maybe not. Let me know what you guys think. Bam, 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 bam. And since we're keeping everything else the same, the the cylinder head and the compression and the, all of that stuff is remains the same. The only thing that we're changing, you know, the dynamic compression. We're not putting dimples in it. We're not changing rod ratio. We're not doing any of that stuff. That any of that stuff that we know changes it dramatically, or or, or that we think it does. So let me know. I'm I'm curious to see if um, because you would think that. If you added a camshaft, if you added a bigger camshaft, a bigger than stock camshaft, 
Did you change dynamic compression? You should lower dynamic compression, correct? And then if you did, would that make detonation less likely? I don't know. You guys would have to let me know. Uh, seems like 91 Octane really struggles to hit two, two wheel horsepower per cubic inch. No, because in my experience, timing has more to do with cylinder pressure than it does with most anything else. Does the truck Norris decrease cylinder pressure? No, the truck Norris should increase cylinder pressure because it makes more torque. So since it makes more torque, you would think that those two things would go together. Would be more cylinder pressure and the heat with a cam, I would think. The the heat, you mean combustion heat, maybe? Solar head design, chamber shape, iron versus aluminum, bore diameter, dwell at TDC, cam, event timing, inlet air, temperature, all play a part in how octane is needed for advanced curves. Yeah, but we're not talking about changing any of that stuff. We're only talking about changing the camshaft. I found back in the day that more cam and the larger turbo, the more power could be made on pump gas, seemed like less cranking compression from more cam. Plus later boost onset is helped. <whistles> Depends on the camshaft. If 7 PSI will cause detonation, you can make a lot more cylinder pressure by varying the event timing and things like LSA. Even E30 will support a solid 3.5 five to four horsepower per cubic inch if you don't have a good fuel system. Yeah, the the higher octane fuels are definitely beneficial. Temperature is very important. Agree on the torque curve, telling the tail, low end torque kills. Yeah, and this made more torque from 3,000, well, the important area that you'd be talking about for you know, acceleration from 3,000 out to 6,500. Saturday. Uh, I had pizza yesterday or the day before, I think. It's funny that you say looking at the torque curve because the torque curve gives you the idea of the VE of the engine across the band. And that's kind of what I was getting at with the cylinder pressure. Yeah, the the cylinder pressure, you should be able to see, you should be able to correlate cylinder pressure to the torque curve. They all contribute to detonation. Yes, they do. But the only thing we're talking about is the single change. We're only talking about what happens with the camshaft and you're making more power. If the intake closing point is later, you get more air at wide open throttle, not less. Otherwise, it would not make more power. I figure it all comes down to peak cylinder pressure. I have no idea if the bigger cam actually adds that versus just utilizing timing all the cycles. Not to, well, and, and even with turbocharging, you don't get uh, necessarily a big change in peak cylinder pressure. But what you're getting is a big change in average cylinder pressure. So if you see a cylinder pressure trace, what you're doing is you don't get this big spike. I mean, it is more, but what you get is you're filling. If you've if you've looked at a cylinder pressure trace, it's it's producing extra cylinder pressure for uh, you know a length of travel. And then when you do that, if you fill up a bunch in everywhere, it's the average cylinder pressure that makes the power. And you do that with turbocharging, and it works very well. I don't, I, I don't, we don't see the big, like you don't go from 200 PSI to 900 PSI. You go from 200 PSI to an average of 400 PSI through a big range. I'm just using artificial numbers there, but you, you get the idea. Cam timing may change lower RPM compression, say dynamics. So a, lo so a larger cam, an effective way to lower compression. A larger cam 
you lower dynamic compression, but not static compression. Isn't that a timing situation? Because even with the new cam, if you time it right, you wouldn't have to look at the possibility of detonation and still make good power. No, we, we are assuming that both of them are timed so that they don't experience detonation. But the question then would become, if we're making 100 plus more horsepower, is that combination, can they both run the same timing? If one of them has to run less timing before it detonates, then we have the answer to our question. If both of them can run exactly the same timing and not detonate, which is good, maybe we haven't reached the detonation threshold of either one of them yet. And, and, and that's the thing is that's why this is a hard thing to, to figure out because you have to put the motor into detonation. You have to get the thing to knock. And with a knock sensor, that's a little bit safer if it's if it pulls the re requisite timing while you're doing that to save the motor, because <laughs> otherwise this is just a detonation test and that's not a good thing. But would one of them get there before the other one? And if so, which one would more, be more likely to get there? That's These are the questions. Cam timing may change lower RPM compression. Say dynamic. Okay. Thank you for all the great data. Remember that old chart on what compression is with boost. They did that for superchargers. Um, but that's not, I, I don't think that that's a reality thing. I don't think that that's a real thing. When you lower the velocity at lower RPM, the cylinder cylinders feel less. Static compression doesn't change. It's just not getting as much air. Will additional heat come from more horsepower? <clears throat> well, yes. I mean, you have, uh, I guess you could argue that more, I don't think higher exhaust heat comes from, um, I think you just have more exhaust flow feeding the turbo. <clears throat> the turbo obviously is going to spin faster because it has to spin faster to make more power. And if you're making 100 more horsepower at the same pressure, the turbo, it's, it's because the turbo impeller is spinning faster. And the reason that that's doing that is because when you put the cam in, it made more NA power. It had more exhaust energy for the turbo, and then the turbo spun faster. LS engines are kind of funny in this regard, since you can go to so much larger of a cam and still make more peak torque. But torque later is better for avoiding detonation than low RPM torque. Yeah, but in this case, the the truck Norris cam made more torque everywhere. Uh, I mean, maybe not at fifteen hundred, where some guys ask about. But again, that's that's not never that's not a wide open throttle RPM. Side note: I'm putting together a five point three liter with stock seven ninety nine heads BTR stage three turbo cam, L seven lifters, an eighty eighty eight. 400 liter per hour fuel pump and stock LS3 injectors looking to turn 7,200. So the first thing I would say is I would ask what you're trying to do with it because a stock LS3 injector is not going to make very much power. You need, a, you need, you need to double or triple the size of that injector to feed an 80, an 80 millimeter turbo. I would also recommend a different camshaft on that combination, but tell me what you're trying to do and we can get you um, and, and I would want to know, I don't think you mentioned what, um, you didn't mention what intake manifold you're running and that's going to help determine the RPM range that you want to run. But a stock LS3 injector is not nearly big enough for what you're doing. It's, it's not really even halfway there. Stock cam exhaust valve would close sooner allowing more boost into the cylinder less overlap would increase dynamic compression ratio favoring incident of knock assuming ignition timing is the same allowing more boost into the cylinder you you think that boost is bleeding out because that's not accurate because the power output doesn't show that that's happening uh this cam I th this BTR the truck Norse cam I don't think it has if it has any overlap it's one or two degrees 
Um, I'd have to go and do the math on it, but um, overlap also is your friend. You turbo cams want to have turbos want to have overlap. Could I get, with, get away with making 800? The turbo will easily support 800. Your injectors will not support 800. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're uh, under boost. Your stock LS3 injectors are going to be more like 500 or 550 horsepower. And on E85, even less. Because those are only 42-pound ejectors, I think. I always used homemade audio knock sensing gear. Rich, for the money, say $2,500 to $3,000, would you build an already owned Smog era small block Chevy or a big block from the wrecker? What, what, is, what is it you're trying to do? You, what, what is the goal of the motor? What, what do you try to build it for? I just ran E85 or E100. So I don't have to worry about knock detonation. That's good. Are the rings gap properly? Are, are the rings gap properly in our detonation motor? Yeah, yes, they are. If it's under two horsepower per cubic inch, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one would detonate first. It does in this question. If the timing is the same, then the engine making more power should reach detonation first because the charge is denser, but it should require less timing in the tune for the same reason. <clears throat> Both of these run with the same timing. I use much larger than a truck Norris cam to maximize power potential on pump gas. Yeah, this isn't a question about how to maximize power production <laughs> that, that would be a that would be another discussion do you know website i can research all the fastener sizes for an lm7 i want to double check what i took off or need to buy a new and replace if you can show me pictures of what you're talking about the um uh, other than a change in the length the front cover, the rear cover, the oil pan, even the um, the lifter valley uh, or, or the valley cover, um, those are all the same fasteners. They have the same head and then they have the same um, thread. There might be some differences in length in those. I'd have to go back and look. Some of them have different heads on them. Some of them have 13 millimeters, but otherwise they're all going to be 10s. Your head bolts are easy to determine which ones they are. The ones that go in the, the stock ones that go in the head are going to be 10 millimeter and they're going to be a little bit longer. The short ones that you have would be cam retaining plates. And then you'll have three that you can use a, almost any length. Um, again, same 10 millimeter head, same, I think it's a six millimeter thread that go in that hold the, there's three that hold the cam retaining or the cam gear to the camshaft. Those could be any length because you're not going to you're not going to bottom those out. Um, the oil pump, if you've taken that off, that's one or two bolts. Those are very specific. Those don't look like any of the other ones. I run nine pounds with a carb. Need more passion, more booze, <laughs> less timing. It's a daily driver for a little fun in the weekend, and it's an LS2 intake. Yeah, you you need more injector, and and then and I would put a smaller camshaft in it. It it would be if it's a if it's a weekend thing. If you're not taking it to a drag drag strip where you're trying to utilize all of that turbo, 
what I would build for a thing to drive around and have fun with is I would want something more responsive. So I'd put a smaller camshaft in it and I'd put a smaller turbo on it. What you should do is put a smaller turbo on it and a smaller camshaft in it and go drive it around and have fun with it. And then you go, you know what this thing really needs is it needs like another five or 10 pounds of boost. Then you can go, okay, now I can go to a bigger turbo. But even with a smaller cam, you'll be able to you'll be able to max out a much bigger turbo. Generally, an aftermarket cam pushes a power band up higher in the RPM range, so it would make more power easier outside of peak torque. So I'd say it's less prone to detonation with the same timing. Yeah, but not in this case. The The Truck Norris cam r runs in the same RPM range as a stock one does. It does it does run more engine speed, but also, like I said, from 3,000 to 6,500, it made more power and torque than the stock cam. But I see what you're saying. If we put a big camshaft in it, it only makes power on the top and would make less torque than the stock one it probably would be less prone to detonation, but that's not this camshaft. I'm trying to talk my buddy into putting twin GT45s on his big block 396. 11 to one compression, aluminum heads. Uh, for fuel, you, you're you gonna have to run something that has a lot of octane in it. So if you get a, a an E85 carburetor would be, be ideal, and then you run E85 in it. And, a, and for a carb size, we run an 850 as a blow-through carb. I'm sure Kevin probably has E85 blow-through carbs. Would it change these results if both detonation motors had variable cam timing? It would be another thing that you'd have to adjust to to minimize detonation. The cam may help cylinder filling evacuation, which would help cool the cylinder, but the increase in VE will increase cylinder pressure. Stock cams also have wide LSAs for a smooth idle. I picked up a bunch of power on my carb engine by, by a tighter LSA. <clears throat> The factory spec for ring gap my engine is eight thousandths to fourteen thousandths on the top ring, and thirteen to twenty. What what motor are you talking about that has that? Eight thousandths ring gap would not be enough. Would not, in my opinion, is not enough for almost anything. We, we run six and a half thousandths per inch of bore. So you're looking at something that's going to be three, six, 18, seven, something that's going to be in the mid twenties. And I, and I do it the same for both the top, the first and the second ring. It seems fuel and spark management is much more significant to boosted detonation issue than cam profile. But that's not the question, though. The question isn't 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 the tune. The tune is right. <laughs> Which one of them gets the detonation first? Which oil do you recommend to run in a six liter twin turbo on methanol? I don't know. You're going to be, normally we pick the oil based on the, the oil pressure curve that we want and the, the um, bearing clearances. So I don't know what those are on your combination. On methanol, you're going to be changing the oil a lot because it's going to contaminate the oil a lot. Mm. Uh, Tim, I don't know what a factory coyote gap is.
it's off road and the ability to do drag and drive. So off road, you mean it's like four wheeling? Let me scroll back here a little bit. Oh, so you're looking at uh, if the price is the same for both of them from a wrecking yard, I would definitely go with the bigger motor. So when I talked to, kept telling me that they run 25 pounds of boost on pump 93 gas. And I told him it was motor ready to blow up. It's on a Mustang 306 with a turbo. It's his motor ready to bolt, blow up. I He's got a, a five liter Mustang running 25 pounds of boost on pump gas. Something doesn't seem right there. Interesting how carb size discussion is always bigger is better. I... I don't agree with that first statement, but throttle body discussion doesn't seem to follow us. Well, the the re the difference between so first of all, I don't believe that a bigger carburetor is better. The and and because of this reason, so there's a difference between what's going on with a carburetor and what's going on with a throttle body. A throttle body a size doesn't determine fuel flow but a carburetor size does determine fuel flow. So the amount of fuel that you get, the signal that you get through the carburetor is a function of the thing that's drawing on the carburetor and the size of the carburetor. On a throttle body, that doesn't happen. We're not asking it to deliver fuel. When we have fuel injection, we're telling it to, to deliver this amount of fuel. When the carburetor is in use, the motor is drawing on the carburetor and asking it to deliver fuel. And the amount of fuel that it gets delivered is a function of the signal through the carburetor. So the bigger is better is not a real thing. You need to size the carburetor so that it has the signal that you want and also not be restrictive. Okay, um, Lester, a four liter inline six Aussie motor. So is it a, is it a Barra motor? Yeah, it needs more ring gap. You, you, you need ring gap in the twenties, in the mid twenties. Richard, what do you think about the Chapacabra under boost? Well, since it made the, it, it made very comparable power to the truck Norris cam, I think it works fine. And just like every other cam, <laughs> bigger cams will increase cylinder pressure, but usually higher in the curve. The torque curve will show that larger cams will be overall more fuel sensitive. In my opinion, it comes down to air consumption. Th this cam that we're talking about in this just in this discussion made more power everywhere than a stock cam. M maybe not 1500, <laughs> but everywhere above 2900, it made more power. I'm running an Extreme Energy 274 cam and a 306, uh, 76, 75. Yeah, that's a that's a good cam. I mean, it's a good NA cam. So what do we know about good NA cams? We know that they'll be good boost cams. <clears throat> uh, regarding the pole, the tune is right. Then small cam causes more vacuum at maximum flow. Why does the small cam cause more vacuum at maximum flow? And it will lean out the mixture. There's no leaning out the mixture. This isn't a carbureted motor. This is a fuel injected motor. So there's no leaning out the mixture. The air fuel is spot on and the timing is spot on on both of them. That's what that's what it means by the tune is right. So both of them are 11 and a half to one and both of them have the same amount of timing. The small cam, what well, what we're looking at is not tuned, so you need to you need to go away from tune. You need to look at other things. What's happening with the power? Because um, we know the boost is the same. We know that the temperature from the boost is the same. You need to look at the power curves and decide. Hey, the, one of these is making a lot more power than the other one. Which one of them, because of that, is more likely to detonate? 
A four by four that can swap tires and do drag and four wheel and four wheel. Okay. I, I would use a big block because that sounds like it's going to be a heavy vehicle. More, more average power is going to be beneficial for you. The two is a good 25 PSI and 93 is now the realm of possibility. I'm running 20 pounds on 92. Are, are you doing it on a five liter Ford? I'm curious, but my gut is telling me the higher horsepower engine would detonate first. I'm shooting in the dark, though, keeping the fuel same, but that's why I'm here to learn. M me too. I'm, I am I don't know the answer to it. I, I suspect that the one that makes more power would be more likely to get into detonation first. <laughs> but I would like to see that. And, and, and more importantly, I'd like to see, like, how much is it? Is it one degree sooner or two degrees? Do, do we got to take five degrees out of it and take take away a bunch of the power that we gain from the camshaft? Um, is there a better camshaft choice? Like we soften it up down low and pick up more power up top. Is there a better camshaft that would that'd be more likely to do that? Honestly, we're not going to change the, as we've seen with a lot of these LS motors, we're not going to change the peak torque a lot. If we have a if we have a, a truck Norris cam and a sloppy stage two cam and a not a chopper copper because that's too similar, but even a 459 cam, the peak torque is going to be similar. They're just going to happen in a little bit a different RPM, but again, not a lot. <clears throat> so if we base it on you know peak torque, <laughs> there's not a lot to choose from there. The interesting part would be a fixed boost level with larger cam. The boost would drop, but power would increase. It would be interesting to see the, the comparison of cylinder pressure. Single over cam and pre bearers have the same gap. Okay. Yeah, it needs more gap. Eight, eight thousandths, or even 14 thousandths is not enough. We see stuff in the teens on NA motors and especially later stuff where uh, fuel mileage and um, emissions, especially are a concern because added ring gap is going to change those. Maybe not fuel mileage so much, but but definitely um, emissions. But you need more ring gap if you're running boost in it. Oh, 500, 200, single pattern, 48, run 10 to 12 every day on pump gas. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the 500 and 200 and is the single pattern, is it a 4.8? I don't know what, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the numbers reference. So my 235, 244, 242 cam has a worn lobe. What's your preference? BTR stage four or cam motion Titan King. I never tested the, the cam motion cam. And, and I'd like to see a comparison. Do you have all the other things that go with that? I mean, do you have a, you have 215 heads, a LSXR intake manifold. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd I'd like to see a. I I kind of would like to compare the Red Hot cam to the to that Stage Four cam. And what what size motor is this? Looks like a budget build three ninety three with the only expensive part being AFR heads is a good three fifty one no machine required option like one of my van. Stock cam would create more cylinder pressure at lower RPM, or its larger cam would be more forgiving with making everything with more RPM. It, yeah, except that in this case, that's not true. The truck Norris cam makes more torque. So it has more cylinder pressure at every RPM 2,900 and above. Overbuilt, what's up? <laughs> Late, great subject. Richard likes softening idea test. Cam softening, yeah. Is 
So your your 428 went faster with a 750 than an 850? I wonder if the tune's off on the bigger carburetor. I would think that motor could use it unless it's and it's although if it's running 120 miles an hour, that's um you would think that that motor could use an 850. Are you planning to do some octane limited testing with knock sensors? I don't have the ability to do that. <laughs> Millspec, what's up? 500 and 200 at 50 and a 4.8. So you run 93. Yeah, I... Uh oh my, my light just died. Um, I, know, I know Matt was... His rule is 14 pounds and 14 degrees of timing. So you can take away enough timing to have it not detonate at certainly at that boost level, 25 pounds. My, my, my response to the 25 pounds on a 302 is two things. For, first of all, 25 pounds on, a, on pump gas means that you have no timing in it. it. It would mean that you have maybe even single digit timing in it. So you've stripped away all the timing. So the thing, I just don't know how much power it's going to make if you did that. And then also, 25 pounds on a stock bottom end, uh, you know, five liter block. I, I would start to be worried about things. <laughs> China sells soft cams. Merry Christmas to everybody. The cam is a brain. Uh, so if something went wrong, it might be there in the valves and timing. Yeah, I did the 14 at 14 at 10 probably has 16 to 17 degrees of timing. Okay. And the amount of timing you have is also relative to the amount of timing that the motor wanted NA. So <laughs> if you have like an LS that wants to run the NA timing, let's say they want to run best at 29 degrees, that they make the most power at 29 degrees. And then you run... 20 degrees like we do under boost or 21 or somewhere in there with good gas. But if you had a motor like a five liter Ford or a big block Chevy or small block Chevy, they wanted 35 or 36 degrees. You then don't run also run 20 degrees there. You, you run more than that. In fact, on boosted big block stuff, we normally run 30 degrees of timing if we have, you know, decent gas in it. Is this not a scenario where dynamic compression changes due to added overlap would come into play? Yeah, I don't know that it's specifically due to overlap, but it's but it does have more dynamic. You would think since we increased the torque and power output that we did change the dynamic compression with this camshaft. Richard, why is a dual plane intake good for runner length? It's uh, the dual plane thing is not specifically runner length. It is it is usually longer than a um, longer than a single plane, but a dual plane always makes more low speed power. And by low speed, I mean up to some point. Sometimes all the way up to six thousand compared to a single plane. So if that's what you're looking for, that's what you should get. Spent lots of time trying to make the 850 work on the 428, but the 750 with big jets always runs faster. I ultimately accepted that those long runners and stroke didn't need it. Okay. Red Hot is 221, yeah, 240X, 233, 248, 236, 244. I, I would be curious if you saw anything, in a, saw a difference between the Stage 4 and that Titan cam. I don't know if you would. You'd have to look at it and nitpick it. I'm I'm curious how the Red Hot Cam would do compared to the other two. Can a stock LQ4 run 5 to 7 PSI and 93? Yes. And, and especially on a centrifugal because you're going to not be building boost the way that a turbo does. On my big block, I'm at 16 initial, 
32 total on 20 pounds on 92 carbureted. So you're you're running 22, you're running 20 pounds with 32 degrees of timing with 92 octane. Admiral, I'm working today. <laughs> this is this is my work. So we're oh, our poll is 50-50. Got a stock cam turbo run at seven and a half. Uh, PSA be more likely to detonate than a cammed one at seven and a half. We got a we got a whole chock full of maybes. Does that uh, Katie? Does that also have an intercooler on it, or is it just a blow through deal? Not just, but. So can we build a dual plane with short runners for all RPM for EFI? I don't think so. I don't think you 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 can't, at least I've never seen anybody put together any manifold combination that does everything everywhere. So if that's the thing that you're, if that's your thinking, uh, I don't think that that's going to work. Just a blow through. Okay. Wow. No, and no winner. Cool. Carburetors are good for, for charge cooling. That's for certain. High underhood temps. Off-road towing cams can make more boost at lower turbo RPM. You, you just mean smaller cams, right? What width of spacer should I use? Are you talking about a carb spacer between the carburetor and the intake manifold? I'm, I'm not convinced you even need a spacer. Does, does it already work the way that it is? Uh, spacers, the problem with carb spacers is that they're not universal. It's somewhat universal what a open spacer does versus a four hole or two hole or tapered or, you know, some kind of thing. An open spacer usually changes things, make it, it reduces the signal dramatically. So it usually softens the bottom end and can make more power on the top. Kind of what it, if if and I'm talking about running this on a dual plane on a single plane it doesn't really do this but on a dual plane it definitely does this because it's basically changing the de design of the intake manifold on a carbureted application but again <laughs> well, how much is the trade off on each side is there even a gain for the negative how big is the negative all of that stuff actually has to be tested. I, yeah, I don't know, but the spacer has to be tested. I, I've never, I don't, I don't put one on there. I haven't run enough spacer specific combinations to where I'd say, yeah, on this combination, if you duplicated this combination, this is the spacer I would use. Or if you use the spacer, here's what would happen. Because I don't know if I've ever run a spacer where it was a win everywhere, where it just was better and, and you should always run it. There's usually a trade-off somewhere. Richard, can you get any horsepower increase from cooling the gasoline? They did on carbureted applications, but I didn't didn't see it on an EFI one. Looks like Big Dog's porting service takes a while. I might port my 351 Windsor upper and lower intake soon. Hard to get in the long runner stuff, but... I remember porting back in the day, five liter HO ones, and we just made the area that you could see better. <laughs> I'm not sure it did anything. Running nine and a half to one, 228, 
You have to cut open the upper intake. Yeah, we the the way that it used to be done before is you'd cut the back of the plenum off and then go in and pour it through that. I, I didn't ever want to do that. We don't want to weld it back together and then, you know, weld it back together and then grind off the weld and polish the thing. And it's just, in, in my opinion, is more work than it was worth. Welding cast aluminum also can be problematic because it's porous. I had a Dynan ISR3 that made 11 PSI, 10.8 to 1 centrifugal blower, a big inner cooler. Yeah, that's cool. Centrifugal blower would be less problematic than these turbos because it's just not going to make the torque that it does in, in, in the middle part of the curve because it just doesn't have the boost there. It has very low boost there. And so it's going to make peak torque actually up very close to peak horsepower. It destroyed itself. <laughs> Did it itself the first go around? Yeah. All right, Admiral, back to work. That's hybrid tactics and the stock bottom end, MSD, BTM. That is old school. Um, what size motor is that? Is that, did you say it's a 4.8 KD? K to the D? 51 on the yes. <laughs> the yeses are surging ahead. Wonder about fuel cooling on a DI engine. The high pressure must get it hot. But will cooling the fuel mess with atomization? Yeah, I don't know. It's be something that have to be tested. We might could do that at Brian Tully Racing. They've got they they run DI motors there, so we could try that and see. Four sixty eight single and a sing. You run. Wait a second. Wait a second here. You're running twelve pounds. On a single GT45 on a 468, something doesn't add up. A, a GT45 is not going to do that. Hyperjectic tire, an indicator that it's an LS. Three driven turbo build for longevity, not high output. It seems DI with the 85 would be a great combo for boost and compression. Twenty pounds on a GT forty five on a four sixty eight. A GT forty five is like a seven hundred horsepower turbo on a big block, and that's going to happen way earlier than twenty pounds, even on pump gas. Does it have twenty pounds at like thirty five hundred, and then falls off to eight at the top? Uh, yeah, the fuel, I don't know about the fuel cooling on it. You'd think that the really high pressure and the fuel on the DI stuff, um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to try that. It's an 80, 80s era gear hard. The horsepower numbers of the modern era are almost mythical. The, yeah, the amount of power that people are making now is ridiculous. Obviously, we've learned a great deal since, since you know, the 70s and the 60s and the 80s and stuff. People, people are definitely making a lot more power. The Zippy Loan Department. Uh, it's four speed hits 10 ish in the first two and seems to be endless on the top at 20 from there on out. 
Should I get a T6 flange on a low boost 440? N no, I would get a, if you can get a T4, then you should get a T4. Because if you're only running low boost, I, I would rather have the response than the exhaust flow. I ran water injection that came on at 12 PSI, allowing the higher boost 15 PSI and 91 octane without retarding timing. Okay. Are tuned length extractors good for a centrifugal supercharged application? What do you mean by extractors? Are you talking about the long tube headers? Five hundred is the a thousand is the new five hundred. It has been for quite a while, and that we <laughs> may be moving that number up. Although. You know, when I go drive around, I, I don't see a lot of thousand horsepower streetcars. Yeah, BS, the water injection, like the old Spirico stuff from way back, um, helped with helped a lot of people with high compression NA motors because it allowed them to keep their high compression and also to keep their timing value. So it did help them maintain their power output. So we're going to end our poll at 5248. 52 thinking that the higher horsepower one is probably going to be the more detonation prone. Can't even see that thousand horsepower in Houston on the street. Yeah. I, I mean, just because you don't see a lot of hot rod cars out driving around anyway, most of the cars that you see out on the road are just regular cars. But even when you do see something, you know, what, how often are you going to run across something that makes a thousand horsepower? Let's say 3,000, we're at 10. 4,000 to 4,500 are getting into the high teens. <clears throat> That's weird that a GT45 would be in any way sluggish on a, on a 468. That, that the boost would go up um, with RPM because we sure didn't see that when we ran it on the big block. Description. I oh, know that's a I don't know. I'd have to see where. I'm gonna have to take a look and see where that data is. I need to put. I need to put all that stuff. Now we're going to test this. We can actually get real get real results. What do you mean on the detonation threshold? I can't test it.
Steve, could you talk about the difference between turbo specific cams and NA cams? In my opinion, there isn't any difference. You should pick the camshaft for what you want the camshaft to do when the motor is NA, and then you should just add boost. So if you want to run a camshaft that you can work with the stock uh, converter that idles good, that gets good fuel mileage, maybe you want a camshaft on the other end of that spectrum. Maybe you want one that has lots of chop and you know, you could hear it. <laughs> you want it, you want it to idle so people know you have a cam. Pick all that stuff and then just add boost to it. You don't need a camshaft that somebody says this is a turbo cam because every a stock cam is a turbo cam. Any any sort of little truck cam is a turbo cam. Any sort of high performance stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four camshaft, anything that will fit stock piston to valve clearance, you can run with a turbo. And and ones that don't fit, if you have uh, valve reliefs, you can run with a turbo too. You couldn't take the test motor and bring it up until you see response from the knock sensor. We don't run knock sensors. We don't have knock sensor technology on the dyno. And then even if we did, even if we ran knock sensors on it, what are we hearing? Because of the way that the engine runs on the engine dyno, there's a lot more noise that's not, that's <laughs> that might be knock frequency. And so we might be getting lots of false knock, which we have before. We've tested somebody brought out knock sensor stuff. I think it was uh, Jacobs maybe or somebody brought out some stuff. And while we were making NA runs, um, the thing was showing knock. And there's no knock. There's no detonation on the motor. We know because the curve is perfect. There's no misfire. There's no nothing happening. And... Um, so detonation wasn't present, but it was showing it. So this is the this is the other problem we have is 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 are we really seeing that? I mean, we have solid motor mounts, we have lash in the input chat. There's a lot of things that are going on. When the factories tune for knock sensing, they tune it with the way that the motor is actually in the vehicle. And so they hear everything that's in the vehicle. And they know what that is and the, and they eliminate that and they only listen for the detonation frequency that's in the motor with everything the way that it is. And then when we change that, it can become problematic. I crew on a B-gas Ford Falcon with a thousand horsepower, 14 inch slicks. Cool. Probably have to use audio gear. Yeah, we've done the, but I, I don't like doing it. We did it on my engine master's motor. We did the copper pipe bolted to the head and stuff, and you can hear it. But even then, you have to audibly differentiate the different things you're hearing, especially if you have roller rockers and things like that, all, all of which make, you know, have some frequency. So there's a lot of noise going on in there, and you have to tune that out. The Computer does that very well if it knows exactly what to listen to. But to do it specifically, you'd have to you'd have to tune that. Yeah, the BS, the that's another good example is a gear-driven vortex supercharger has a has a frequency. I had to go through and completely retune the frequency and sensitivity for, for the G10. Yeah, it's not, that's not unusual. Um, tuning at the OEM level is even difficult for those guys. I use Horsepower Academy's video to figure it out. Cool. I made a set of DIY knock sensors for the earphones. Yeah, we've seen that too. But I don't want to be responsible for listening to that. I don't want to. And, and I can't, if I'm listening, I, I'm not logging. So if I'm listening, I go, yeah, I think I heard detonation. Did you or didn't you? And then at what RPM did you hear it at? And, and you know, so it's not, it's not the same as 
having it as part of your data acquisition setup. My grandpa's 86 Daytona Turbo ran seven PSI, no intercooler. Yeah, the early ones are non intercooled. You can run 87, but they did have knock sensors on those. And the factory had, they had low compression. The factory had, they had factory knock sensors on those, which they relied on a lot on those old uh, 2.2s and 2.5s. Of hearing damage from being around gas turbines for seven years. And that's the other thing. If you're listening to detonation, it's, it's, <laughs> It's loud. I wrote the write-up on the electronic spy ear knock sensors. Cool. I still have the performance comp for the Daytona, which I recall gave to it. Oh, the computer? Yeah. So you have a, that's a stage two computer, I think. Yeah, it is. It is better than not doing anything. Definitely. And on that note, it is time to go. You guys all have, you guys all have a good day. I'll try to be back tonight and I'm going to working on another video, which I need to get up. I haven't done one in a couple of days, so it's time. I'll see you guys all tonight.